This mini-med lecture will cover the anatomy and physiology involved with the human sense of smell. Now obviously this is where smell begins, the nose. We all know that the nose acts as the portal of entry for the sense of smell. As we breathe in through our nose, air moves in through the nares and up past the olfactory mucosa, which is tissue that lines the superior aspect of the nasal cavity. As we'll talk about later, small molecules known as ligands stick to the olfactory mucosa and diffuse across, triggering a cascade of events that eventually ends with the sensation of smell. This picture shows the position of the olfactory structures within the nasal cavity. As air passes in through the nares, like this, it circles around in the nasal cavity, allowing ligands an opportunity to stick to and diffuse across the olfactory mucosa. Olfactory mucosa is epithelial tissue located at the superior border of the nasal cavity, right here. The surface of the olfactory mucosa is lined with a layer of mucus. Within the olfactory mucosa, you can find cells called olfactory receptor neurons. These cells have cilia, which are finger-like projections that extend down into the mucus, which is where the ligands bind. The olfactory receptor neurons also extend superiorly up through a structure known as the cribriform plate, which is a bony structure that is part of the ethmoid bone of the skull. After passing through the cribriform plate, the olfactory receptor neurons join the olfactory bulb here, which is a large collection of cells that lies within the cranium, just inferior to the frontal lobes of the brain. There are two olfactory bulbs which lie side by side on top of the cribriform plate. The olfactory receptor neurons synapse onto other neurons within the olfactory bulb. The, the axons of these neurons come together to form the olfactory tract, which is also known, known as cranial nerve number one or the olfactory nerve. This pair of olfactory tracts then extends into the higher levels of the brain to give the individual the sense of smell. We'll talk about all of these details. As you can see in this image, the olfactory receptor neurons are intermingled with supporting epithelial cells within the olfactory mucosa. You can see here that the mucus, the mucus right here, the mucus layer, lines the surface of the olfactory mucosa. These fine strands are the cilia of the olfactory receptor neurons, right there, those fine strands there. Uh, this is where the ligands bind to the olfactory receptor neurons and trigger action potentials within the olfactory receptor neurons. The axons of the olfactory receptor neurons then extend superiorly up through the neurovascular bundles, right here, uh, which extend through the olfactory lamina propria and through the cribriform plate. As you can see here, also found in the olfactory mucosa are Bowman's glands. These guys right here, this is a Bowman's gland. These secrete the mucus found on the surface of the olfactory mucosa. The moist mucus surface of the mucosa allows for optimal ligand binding and diffusion. This is a really neat histologic view of olfactory mucosa. You can see here at this large black arrow, this one here, this is where the cilia and mucus layer are located. Now, this is where the cell bodies of the supporting epithelial and olfactory neurons are found in this region right here. So this is all uh, supporting epithelial cell bodies as well as olfactory receptor neuron cell bo bodies all intermingled and this right here that this arrow is pointing to a, a Bowman's gland so this will be the Bowman's gland with its tract secreting the mucus layer right there the technical name for the sensation of smell is olfaction in order for olfaction to occur certain physiologic mechanisms need to happen. One key point in understanding olfaction is that most substances in our atmosphere put off small molecules into the air. These molecules, like we talked about, are called ligands. Ligands diffuse through the air and may possibly make their way to the human nasal cavity. When the ligand reaches the nasal cavity, 
they come into contact with the mucus layer of the olfactory epithelial epithelium and stick to the mucus. Uh, the ligands dissolve into the mucus and may activate certain protein receptors that are found on the membrane of the olfactory receptor neurons cilia. When the receptors are activated, depolarization occurs and an action potential is sent up through the cell, up the axons, through the cribriform plate, and into the olfactory bulb. When it reaches the bulb, it synapses on the dendrites of certain cells that are called mitral cells. So this guy here is a mitral cell. And these are its dendrites sticking down into the bulb. This, this synapse causes the mitral cells to depolarize and fire their own action potential. Uh, their axons then come together right here to form the olfactory tract, which is essentially a super highway of, of mitral cell axons. Uh, which then travels up to the brain. The axons of the olfactory tract project to various regions in, the, in a specific spot of the cerebral cortex. Certain odors trigger specific olfaction receptor, olfactory receptor neurons, which trigger specific mitral cells, which then activate specific neural networks that our brain has assigned to that specific odor. So when regions of the olfactory cortex are activated by this chain of events, the person experiences the conscious awareness of that smell. And because of their learned memory, they're able to identify that specific activation of neural networks to a sense of smell. Uh, the olfactory cortex is located on the anterior superior aspect of the temporal lobe of the brain, of the brain this yellow spot here. Now, problems with the sense of smell can either be temporary or permanent. And uh, generally, the, the term applied to problems with the sense of smell is called anosmia. Most commonly, the problem is just temporary. There are many different issues that can cause a problem with the sense of smell. Uh, the most common issue is nasal congestion, like the nasal congestion you can get with uh, the common cold or seasonal allergies. Other causes can include nasal polyps, smoking, and anything that can cause damage to the olfactory cortex of the brain or cranial nerve number one, such as uh, strokes or atherosclerosis. That concludes this mini-med lecture on the sense of smell. I hope you found it to be enjoyable and educational. I'd invite you to subscribe to my channel to see more mini-med lectures. I plan to produce um, dozens of these small little lectures in the near future. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.